Minnie McCulloch entered the world in Greenock, a town nestled in the heart of western central Scotland. Her father, John McCulloch, earned his livelihood as a railway engineer. Tragedy struck the family when her mother, Elizabeth Swan, succumbed to cancer in 1857. The chronicle of Minnie's arrival in New Zealand remains shrouded in mystery, yet by the early 1860s, she had settled in Invercargill with her two young offspring. Despite asserting her status as a Tasmanian doctor's widow, no concrete evidence of her marriage was unearthed, and she continued to use her maiden name, McCulloch. In 1872, Minnie exchanged vows with Charles Dean, an innkeeper. The pair took up residence in Edel Creek, positioned between Ohio and Lumsden. This locale held significance as a pivotal stop on the route from Riverton to the Otago Goldfields. As the gold rush fervor waned, the couple transitioned into farming endeavors. However, dire financial straits soon cast a shadow over their lives. Seeking a reprieve, the family relocated to Winton. Charles Dean delved into pig farming, while Minnie sought financial solace through a controversial practice known as baby farming, caring for unwanted children in return for payment. In a time when contraception options were limited and societal norms frowned upon childbirth outside of wedlock, a substantial demand existed for discreet child adoptions, ensuring Minnie Dean's clientele remained steady. It is believed that she oversaw the care of as many as nine young children concurrently, receiving compensation either weekly or in lump sums. During this era, infant mortality was a pervasive concern in New Zealand, with estimates placing the toll at around 80 to 100 infants per 1,000 colonial births. Tragically, a number of children under Minnie Dean's care met their demise due to various illnesses. In March 1889, a six-month-old infant perished from convulsions, followed by a six-week-old baby in October 1891, succumbing to cardiovascular and respiratory ailments. A young boy purportedly drowned under her watchful eye in 1894, and suspicions intensified as she concealed the body in her garden. A coroner's inquiry ensued, yet Dean was absolved of responsibility for these deaths, citing universally poor hygiene standards prevailing even during childbirth. Despite this, the community's faith in Dean eroded, fueled by rumors of mistreatment and unexplained disappearances of children under her care. This climate led to associations between Dean and cases of infanticide or baby farming prevalent in the United Kingdom and Australia, where caretakers killed the children they looked after to evade the burden of their support. Owing to lenient childcare regulations, Dean wasn't obligated to maintain records of the children she accepted, further complicating efforts to substantiate their disappearance. In the lead-up to Dean's trial and subsequent execution, four other women had faced similar charges and initially received death sentences, Caroline Whitting, convicted in 1872, Phoebe Veach, 1883, and Sarah Jane and Anna Flanagan, 1891. In each case, their sentences were commuted to life imprisonment, with child murder being the culpable offense. Decades later, in 1926, Daniel Cooper also met the same fate, being convicted of baby farming and executed, though his second wife, Martha, was acquitted. In a wider international context, Minnie Dean's transgressions found parallels with her late Victorian counterparts and fellow baby farmers, such as Amelia Dyer in the United Kingdom, convicted in 1896, John and Sarah Macon, 1893, and Frances Lydia Alice Noor in New South Wales, 1893. These occurrences, along with historical instances of apparent deliberate child fatalities in New Zealand, contributed to a broader narrative. The Macon case, occurring in close proximity in New South Wales, even found its way into New Zealand newspapers during the same period as the Minnie Dean controversy and trial. In the year 1895, an incident involving Dean aroused suspicion. She was seen boarding a train in possession of a young infant and a hatbox. Curiously, upon disembarking the train later, she carried only the hatbox, with the baby nowhere in sight. Alert railway porters would later attest that the hatbox seemed oddly weighty. A woman named Jane Hornsby came forward with a startling claim she had entrusted her granddaughter, Eva, to Dean. Articles of clothing belonging to Eva were uncovered at Dean's residence. 
Strangely, Dean could not produce the child herself, and a thorough search along the railway tracks yielded no trace of the missing infant. Consequently, Dean was apprehended and charged with murder. The situation escalated as her garden was excavated, revealing three bodies, one of a boy around three years old and two of babies. Further investigation determined that Eva had died due to suffocation, while another child, identified as one-year-old Dorothy Edith Carter, had succumbed to a laudanum overdose, a substance sometimes used to sedate children. The exact cause of death for the third child remained undetermined. Dean faced charges for their murders. Throughout her trial, Dean's lawyer, Alfred Hanlon, contended that the deaths were accidental and had been concealed to prevent the negative publicity Dean had experienced in the past. However, on June 21, 1895, Dean was convicted for the murder of Dorothy Carter and was subsequently sentenced to death. During the months spanning from June to August in the same year, Dean chronicled her own life story. In her account, she claimed to have cared for a total of 28 children. Among them, five were found to be in good health when her establishment was raided, six had passed away under her care, and one had been reclaimed by their parents. This left approximately 14 children unaccounted for, based on her own narrative. On August 12, Dean met her fate through execution by the hands of official hangman Tom Lawn at the Invercargill Jail, located at the intersection of Spade and Laven Streets, now the site of the Noel Leeming car park. Her demise marked a historic milestone as the sole woman to be executed in New Zealand. With the subsequent abolition of capital punishment in the country, this distinction is expected to remain unchallenged. Dean found her final resting place in Winton, laid to rest beside her husband who had tragically perished in a house fire in 1908. Her heinous acts prompted the delayed implementation of child welfare legislation in New Zealand, the Infant Life Protection Act 1893 and the Infant Protection Act 1896.